It was McGregor's after party in one of the big nightclubs, I can't remember the name. I went to the general admission side and McGregor was up on the side and I was like, fuck, I have to get into VIP. <laughs> It's like 10 grand to get in like oh, for a table oh, and stuff like oh so my. there's this guy and he is walking towards the vip side so i was like are you going in the vip he was like yeah and i was like what's the chance of me getting in with you so i put my arm around him and started acting like we we're best friends <laughs> and then was, we basically walked up and approached and the guy showed his ticket and stuff and uh, the bouncer just grabbed my form and just stopped it it's like no fucking way Here's the crack, 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 welcome back, talking shit, I'm drinking wine, like, and subscribe, here's the crack. How's it going, people? Welcome back to another episode of the Here's the Crack podcast, beginning with the podcast, just back from holiday, and, um, holiday, holiday. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. Don't know the rest of the words. Anyway, um, holiday was good. Liked it. Only issue was good vibes. One thing that I will take away from it is someone shot in the pool. Motherfucker! Wow! Literally kicked in the pool. Was it the <laughs> She was in the pool and then she got out of and the pool. And then there was a shit on it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm no detective. Tell me more. So we were kind of, we were kind of, I was lying. I was reading a book and, um, because I'm so You're educated. You're such a reader book by the pool. Yeah, and, uh, that's uh, a such a reader. Open. Next minute, looked over. Were you reading a book, an actual book, or were you on your iPod? No, I was reading a book. Wow. Yeah. Such an intelligent mom. So next minute. <laughs> sitting there it's like you know, it's 50 like, shades of grey oh, you heard kids in the background all jumping in the pool families having a good time the next time up, <laughs> whistle went off I was like oh crap tsunami the what hunger, is the it hunger games. what is it <laughs> so looked, grabs a fucking looked, umbrella looked over this lifeguard can't we start doing this here <laughs> <laughs> this must be the sign for lads it's go time someone's shot in the pool so he's like this here the next minute everybody was like what, what what's, what's this mean Everybody starts beating out of the pool, right? <laughs> Did everybody it's, know this universal I, 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 language? He was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. so everybody's like, I was like, what's he doing? And Lucinda was like, I don't know. So you're looking around the next minute, just this English guy, there's a turd in the pool. Uh, there, I looked over, there's a turd floating in the pool. I actually I float? floating oh in the God. pool. And like, I mean, they clearly weren't trained for this scenario because about four of them, all these lifeguards are just stand around <laughs> watching <laughs> after <laughs> trying to catch it. Watch it. Got it! Literally just watching. And sitting and floating the next minute. It floated over and started like hitting the side of the pool. But it wasn't like a proper like you know when you just unleash a you know a big one. La? It was like a wee you know, it was a wee skittery one. <laughs> Was it that one? Like, yeah, it just slipped out. Like, so was it solid? Was it like holding itself together? Like, <laughs> was it just supporting its own weight? Like, it, it was floating. Was like, it such an architectural nice person. Soul. You need to know. Like, is it like was it dispersing supporting? all around the pool, like in the fog? Or so basically, um, then the next minute, obviously everybody started getting out of the pool, and there was panic and all this here. And I, I looked at us and I said, like, "Look, I'm, I'm away at the bar because the bar's going to get really busy now." If I walked past and you looked in the pool and seen it floating, I was like. Bleh! <laughs> Never getting back in that pool again. Then they came out with the nets and started fishing out. Oh. <laughs> but before the boy, the boy was had the nets out, and then they, I had sent you the video, and they were trying to cordon off the pool. But as they were doing it, all you heard was everybody going, "No, no, 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 no!" Some guy dived in. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and then I mean perfect dive. Tom <laughs> Tom Daly execution. Like, the the turd was at one end of the pool. He dived down at the bottom and was like Dang down along the bottom. <laughs> no. But he was about to come out to the top. And during the middle of the pool, he like bounced up, resurfaced to the water, and everyone's like, no, 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 no. And he pure started panicking. And <laughs> this, this, lad, this wee, this wee lad was like, so oh, shit in the pool. And he looked over and started swimming away. I was like, lad, it's hardly going to grow fins and start following you. <laughs> but he pure. I think it was intentional. I think he was like, everybody's looking at the pool. This no, is my chance. He was this like, was a he was a Spanish fella. So I don't like, I don't really know, but uh, it was so funny because all you heard was no, 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 no. But then you heard this like, it was a perfect dive, like you just bloop. But then he just, it was the way he was like grace the water, like just floating <laughs> along the bottom. And I said, like, he's just ready for him to just <laughs> resurface. Also, Mouthful of turd. Love it. <sighs> but anyway, you said you experienced a lot of that on holiday. Yeah. yeah it was like a daily, I've never had that Do before. It. Never. I don't Do you know? Never had that. You said one thing and it sort of like resonated with me now. 
You said there's a lot of English people there. Yeah. There's a lot of English people in the place I was at too. The English people just shit in the pool. <laughs> it's just supposed to be a thing, look. It's like you don't get it. I don't I never really got it on any other holiday. Yeah. Like generally you're in the holidays and there's a lot of Irish people yeah, and stuff. You don't get that in Bundorn, like. You don't get that in Bundorn, it's right, hey. You'd be left at home if you shot in the pool, like. <laughs> um but yeah, we were at a place one year somewhere in Spain and it was like a big hotel resort. And there was like two pools and I mean at least twice a day. I never even see I never see yeah. any shits in the pool, but at least twice a day someone was shitting in the pool. I think it was like the kid like someone in the kids' pool. Like people were just leaving their kids in the pool because it was so shallow. Yeah. And just fucking off. And so they, they <laughs> were just, back and it's just brown. They, they were just shitting away like because obviously the parents weren't there to take them to the toilets. And it was actually such a frequent thing. They had a siren and it was called a code brown like <laughs> and I, I, I shit you chill. not I shit you not pardon the it, pun it literally I'm pretty sh- there was like a siren that went off and like flashing lights and I'm like woo <laughs> <laughs> and like, <laughs> like the first day I was like what the fuck's that I was like what the fuck and like my ones were like what is that about shit and heading under the sunbed yeah. and, <laughs> and then like the rap no <laughs> mum quick quick now climb the tree climb the tree <laughs> the raps and all were like out of the pool out of the pool and then by day four or five we were just like, like just it was <laughs> just the norm like hearing the noise it was like shake that was going and yeah. skip it up <laughs> come on to fucking eco for a swim <laughs> like, a packet of crisps just like <laughs> yeah but I did not didn't do a lot of swimming uh, that holiday uh, like, Jesus but, Christ no that's way. crazy how does one shit in the pool that's like, how, how does one shit no that. manners in you know no that's manners you go to like an all's only hotel do, do, <laughs> you know, do you want to know what the thing was like most of the like a lot of the there was a kiddie pool yeah. so like the kiddie pool had the proper weight like the kids in it yeah. like this pool was like maybe 10 or above yeah so do you know what 10 I mean, you should know if, if i if i brought my kids if i ever if i ever have kids and i bring them to a pool and they're 10 gets <laughs> up <so>, hot dad <laughs> so i had to let go i'd be like they're no earning and you're like come you on be, you go back you go in and get that like <laughs> but then, like, then one of the one of the, girl, mother, so that one, of the one of the girls a couple of seats down from us was like it's probably a wee kid that just having so much fun and probably didn't want to go and go to the toilet i was like do not excuse <laughs> shit himself with excitement like the sin is like oh, oh per, yeah. per wee thing What's oh my god this is so fun god bless him anyway moving on from sh1t um talking straight i know um it's time to get into this week's segment of tommy's question time roll the intro greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the greatest show on earth it's tommy's question time do you have any weird phobias mm-hmm. like just random phobias not it's not random but i hate like you know i uh, i don't like tight spaces you see when you see like oh, the yeah. you know, the stuff on tiktok or the key of people that takes the breath out of me I don't like um oh, right now, I don't like tight spaces. You don't like um, elevators though? No. I don't do elevators. Um I just don't like I don't like being confined. I, I really don't <laughs> I don't panic. I, don't I, I really <laughs> panic. I proper panic like um Have you ever had like a proper panic attack in an elevator? Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Man. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Let's go. No, no, I don't know. Like, it just it, cre- it, no, like, it creeps up. It creeps up on me. Like, like it's, it's a weird one. Like, it's the one thing. <laughs> I, I also I don't have a phobia. I wouldn't say I pure panic about it. But you know, like whenever you see a picture and it's all like wee tiny holes really close together, hmm. there is a word for it. I think it's like trinophobia or uh, something. I used to have dreams whenever I was a kid of like a room, and it was like full of like wee square tiles, and one of the tiles would be missing. <laughs> And I, this was a night, reoccurring dream and nightmare that I used to have, and I w- used to wake up just in fucking absolute sweat <laughs> over this room. With you caught into the bathroom and curtain tiles. the tiles on the floor. But then you like you'd find the tile and it wouldn't fit. What be not the fuck? Was so f- okay. such such a weird one. Like yeah, grew out of that though. Thank fuck. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> just, time. just a couple of weeks. Fuck fuck that's a tough one. time. <laughs> it's just, it's just like I don't like it whenever I see something that's it's called triophobia or something that's called. But I don't, I don't be panic. But I'm just like, no, get that away from me. Is and the reason why I knew I wasn't, I didn't like it was there's a plant in the study in Lucinda's house, and it's that plant there. Oh, right. and it has a whole pile of wee holes in a pattern. And every time I looked at it, my my body just went like, oh, oh. yeah, 
get that away Jesus, from me. I wasn't know. expecting it. I get this deep, bro. Mm. No, like I just don't like. I just don't like. It. Like the the whole El- the Elvier things. Like every like a lot of people have that. Like just don't like tight spaces. I'm yeah. the same. Like, like if you if I if I flip and chucked you down a wee tight cave thing, would you be happy? Like no, no, exactly. That's so therefore, you've though. got a phobia of being trapped. Mm. <laughs> Jesus, <sighs> I'm a phobia of sand. Fucking hate Actually. sand. Why? Beach, I just hate elaborate. It. I just hate it the way it sticks to you and like just it's you're scared it's, of sand. It follows you around everywhere. It's like, like Slender you Man. <laughs> you can never get away from sand. Like, like once you go to the beach, the sand follows you. Home. Follows you everywhere. everywhere. Like. And then like a couple of weeks down the down the road, like you're like, oh, a couple no. of weeks down the road. And I'm driving to the that, beach for that beach that yeah. day, and then like next thing you know, we look down. There's fucking sand. Like it follows you. Like it's like a horror film. It's I uh, yeah, like you, it just makes me feel sick. Like. What about you? Go to the beach. Right. I'm just gonna give the example of like, do you ever be in the shower and you're like washing your hair and you close your eyes and you think there's someone in the room? <laughs> <laughs> do you get that? Yeah, I love that. <sighs> Such Ooh, a rush. I swear to fuck. There's times that. where like you will be washing your hair and you have your. It just comes into your head. You'd be you're like, you're what if there's someone standing here with a knife and I can't see them? <laughs> but do you know then you open your eyes and you're proper like. <laughs> do you know <laughs> trying to get all the suds out of your eyes now? <laughs> Falling all in the bath. Uh, no! <laughs> Head and shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> it happens sometimes when you just take a notion, you're like, what if there's someone here? Do you think it comes from you getting robbed? The apartment? I don't think so, no. Like, I've always had that Because you said something to me the other night, and I actually thought, oh, I, I have this thing I, now. If I don't think the door's locked, they can't go to sleep after you get up and check. Yeah. Uh, it's proper freaks me See, he said, he said this to me the other day. He goes, uh, oh, whenever I was in the last flat, like, if I heard, like, a noise, I proper couldn't sleep for a while. And I was like, I definitely did not expect that from you. Mm. Definitely, definitely did not. I, I, I would have thought you'd have been the type of person where if you heard a noise, you'd have been like, oh, God, bro, no, go check if that door's locked. You probably would Roll have back over and went to sleep. Not occurred, but now it's like, what if the door's not locked? What if you die? What if you're dead? Fuck, I was in bed last night and a dolly log legs jumped in beside me. Jumped in? I didn't even know. <laughs> locked in the bed. <laughs> 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 for one more. There was one plan about the room. I was trying to swat now. him, couldn't get him, and then look, I'm just lying there down, and all of your, like, fucking all this noise, and like, jumped down onto the covers and all. Like, what type of dolly log sex <laughs> was this? <laughs> What Ooh, the big fuck? boy, <laughs> <laughs> daddy's home. <laughs> yeah, I actually didn't jump in the bed with me. All that was fucking weird. Like, oh I was like, sw- no, it was what? pitch black in the room, and I was swinging the arms. I was like trying to swat him, and it just kept fluttering everywhere. <laughs> that was just such a mess. Like. <laughs> Let me get in. I used to be shit afraid of cockroaches. Probably still am. Haven't seen one in a long time. Cockroaches are the scariest thing ever. Like. Mm. They're so like alien. I think everybody has. F- like uh, you say, whenever you say phobia, I immediately think of something like proper serious. I just think like a random thing with a proper like yeah. freaky out. Like. But I have plenty of things that just freak me. Out. Like um, you know, I have really weird um, like certain fields of material <laughs> freak me out. Like. Mm. like I remember I used to have Hurt this. Teeth. I man, like it just really great. Gr- uh, it just you makes me go to like, phob- phobia as well. Uh. People biting on the ice cream. Mm. I fucking really? hate it. It's disgusting. I used to hate it. I can do it now for some reason. I don't know how it's on full circle usually. Oh, it's rotten. It's not as bad when it's like Sensitive. someone. It's like a. So a it's like a whipped ice cream. But yeah. you say when someone's eating like a fucking like Joker ice lolly or something like yeah. rock hard, and they're like biting and the, and people mm. chewing ice. Like what the fuck's that about? Like, uh, I chew ice. What the fuck? <laughs> I chew ice. Why? You lose weird. Fun. Uh, get like a I just if I'm drinking and get I get a glass of water. If I get to the fucking chew the ice. I get to the end. I just go like oh. People actually just eat ice like to curve hunger. I fucking weirdos. Like. Fucking right. People eat ice, eat ice to cure hunger. Yeah. Have a glass of water. But the, you need to, the sensation of eating. The sensation of broken ice cutting your mouth. Yeah. Like, it's like zero that. calorie food. Like oh, it's just depressing. Do you know if um? <laughs> do you know? Do uh, the salad, Apparently, some pregnant women, right, mm. crave coal. Yes, oh, yeah, that's right. and chalk yeah. and like different types of materials that shouldn't be eaten. So you Have can- you seen the girl who eats chalk? There's some girl who has like a chalk addiction, and she eats like lumps of chalk, like you know, you draw on a blackboard with, like that, and that's fucking, like disgusting. all day long eats chalk. Yeah. So imagine, that. imagine like a couple of years from now, you and brother are having kids or something. She's like, "Why nip me to the, nip to the shop and get me charcoal?" <laughs> or cool you're like oh, yeah, people eat nice she marched away <laughs> <laughs> the cool, cool, eh? 
But um, no, I don't I, like phobia wise. Yeah, I would say the only thing that freaks me out is just tight spaces. Like, I just don't like it. Like, don't like it. But uh, you have a proper phobia, like a phobia, like not just something that f- you've. It was just weird phobias. It's not that extreme. Oh right, no, but I'm asking you that question. Like, have you got a proper like anything that would proper freak you out? <sighs> Tommy's not scared of anything. Don't know. Mm. I feel like if a, a proper big spider is one, like proper yeah. big one, like yeah. I would freak <laughs> out. So what about him having to get you to kill this? Oh, I remember that. Bruno was like, "Tommy, come, there's a spider." Tommy came. Ross, come, there's a spider. <laughs> we were all chilling in Thomas's. I um, don't. I just hate them. They're fucking wrong. We were all chilling in Thomas's living room the night when Thomas just walked in as calm as could to be like. And he's good with spiders. And I said, like, "What?" And he goes, "And he's good with spiders." And I said, like, "What do you mean?" And he's like, "There's a spider in my bedroom there. If you don't mind going down, but you were trying to act all cool about it. You're like, if you don't mind going down and getting it." I went down, like marching down the hallway, and just literally like picked it. Everybody standing there, pure freaking out. I was like, "What the heck?" Like, chucked it in the toilet, and you were like, "Are you putting it down the toilet?" I was like, "It's hardly gonna come back up the U bend and crawl up your ass." Like, that happens in Australia. They'll be mm. hiding on the on the way tire, like. <laughs> They'll be hiding, waiting to strike. Like. They do. I sort of fuck like all. <laughs> Nah, someone true. told me that's a, a proper phobia. No, you that's have. true though. In Australia, they're like proper being the fucking toilets and all. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to, I swear to fuck, and you have to check yeah. your shoes and all every morning. Uh, yeah. Well, you'd be on fucking up the high doorway. Yeah, someone, someone told me once whenever I was younger that there was some pub like down the road that some woman went to the toilet once and a rat like fucking ran up the toilet uh, better on the ass. <laughs> man I didn't shit for months eh? I just couldn't <laughs> I had such a phobia believe, I had a phobia of toilets like after that like phobia I always thought this is gonna happen like I was like checking it and all before I went to the toilet no I was fucking <laughs> going scared going to the toilet with a stick like, just like fucking <laughs> come out it down but rats can like breathe underwater and all that actually like, that can happen like, oh, they yeah. can actually yeah, come yeah, up through the they've, they've done experiments they can swim up the U-Bend yeah Thomas is never going to be t- <laughs> no toilet for me tonight. Oh no! I'm shitting in the bath. <laughs> Thomas is going to be head and shoulders tonight, and then be pure scrubbing his eyes, looking at the toilet. The phantom rat going to come ah! up. Um, but let us know. Um, also, if you haven't subscribed or followed the podcast, please go do so. Like it on whatever platforms you listen to, and if you're watching on YouTube subscribe uh, but more importantly if you hear anything that we're talking about on this podcast you'd like to get in touch tell us about your phobias please get in touch we'd love to hear about <laughs> it the weirder the better if people have some weird phobias like don't they no no well that was the whole point of the question yeah but maybe this is a topic we could delve in deeper on <laughs> you always say in the next song. podcast <laughs> but anyway uh moving on this week uh we got to catch up with uh x would you say x love islander well, he was on x island. love islander matthew mcnab Ooh. So we'll string on over to there and Wait. get a chat and catch up with Matthew to find out what life's like after the island. Here's the crack. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, Matthew thanks for having me, everybody. everybody. Yeah, it's um, been a it's been a, a long one. Like you wrote back to me like six months, and then I only see the yeah, messages right now. So I know we were here cursing your name on this podcast ages ago. If you go back to like episode sixty, we were like, he's a dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the only uh, one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, be the last like, we do we do message people and then it's just, it's just i think it's just one of them things that some people are like i think we did message you at the time whenever you were literally just finished love island mm. so oh. it was probably like yeah. you were probably and then obviously you've done a lot since then so my, my uh dms were a no-go back yeah then. we'll give yeah. you a pat we'll give you a pass on what was that like yeah. like well obviously you're on the love island but like what was that like coming out of it like was is it really like everyone messaging and looking something like brands just like oh um I uh, yeah i mean you can sort of change your life a little bit i think it's more broader where you can sort of change your life as much as you want like i could have yeah. went out and went in the city center of belfast and just got absolutely crowded because by like 15 year old girls <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like I, I don't really want to. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but you can do that like and i know a lot of love island people do that but it's kind of like you had to do like a quarantine after love island yeah so i was in the house for like 10 days and i live out in the countryside in down patrick like so right i was uh i was like chilling and then i was just leaving my phone behind like so i was yeah. just watching netflix and just working out and stuff but i yeah. didn't really pay much attention you left your phone. phone yeah i think that's key yeah you gotta leave your phone like yeah. i do it now every single morning i wake up and i i had a really bad bad habit of mm-hmm. looking at my phone and being on instagram and stuff for yeah. like 
I don't know, like 20, 30 minutes. I was like, this is so bad. Yeah. So I literally leave it in the bedroom. I do my meditation, yeah. like on the calm up, and then for like 10 minutes, and then I just leave it in the bedroom and just yeah. try and do work or do whatever. Get on with it. That's funny. We've discussed that like in the podcast. So, like you, you went through a stage where I remember you mess. We were on a call or something. We were discussing like the mm-hmm. upcoming podcast, and Shay was like, "I've deleted Snapchat. No, you've deleted Instagram and TikTok. Everything bar Snapchat. It was just absolutely. It was draining me. Like it was. It is because it's been you're, hours you're, and hours you're like look at it and you're like, what am I even looking at? Yeah. yeah. And then when you go into it a little bit more and you research about it, like I listen to a guy Andrew Huberman and all like yeah, yeah. and um he's like it's your dopamine it's literally draining your dopamine so that you're getting it's like because you keep scrolling and you it's the the thought that you'll see something else you know there there might be something good that comes with the next scroll you keep looking that you keep looking yeah you keep it's like a gambler when they're like oh it'll be the next one i'll get yeah. that that win that big win and it's the same thing it's all dopamine like it's yeah. um so when you look into it a lot more then you realize that this is so bad for you and what yeah. what was it because i know i'm just back from holiday there and i made it a purpose like purposely put left my phone in my room mm-hmm. because i was away and i was like i don't want to but then i suppose when you're away and stuff and like say you have like family at home like a mom and dad and stuff you're a bit like oh, keep it on just you're always i think you make that excuse in your head you're like i'll keep it just in case just yeah. in case and then you find yourself like all it takes is then i ended up just taking the watch off and bringing my phone down to the pool because the watch like as soon as i see like a group chat notification coming up straight on replying to it and then TikTok <laughs> for 10 minutes or something like that there like, yeah what's, what how would you say is the best way to just cut that I think the mornings is the key. The mornings is the big thing. If you can uh, leave it in your room in the morning, because typically nobody's really looking for you that that much in the morning. Like everybody's doing their work or whatever, you know? So um, I think that is the key for me. And then once you get off to a good start and you're being productive in the morning, you're doing your own thing, whether it's like you're just having like a coffee or you're going for a walk or something simple, like um, or tidy in your room, like see when you get on a roll, and then you don't have the distraction of you know this person's doing that you know yeah. blah 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 it sets you up for the day and then you just gain momentum nice you should try and start doing that yeah. Yeah. I went completely off so track you're asking about Love Island there, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's interesting because like, like, I know myself with TikTok like what you just said there makes so much sense because you're just like mm. scrolling and then it gets to the stage you're like what the fuck am I doing have you got to those there? videos and it's like your girl looking in the mirror it's like that goodness gracious song and she's like looking in the mirror and it's like you need to take a break yeah, oh, I, no. <laughs> I, I literally one night i was scrolling i think it was on a five hour straight no joke like and i got it three times it came up it was like you're sc- you're on this too long like. <laughs> so like at that point i was like yeah yeah you know, I'm I'm like, you're, st- like. <laughs> you're messaging her and you changed my life <laughs> <laughs> thanks babe <laughs> you saved me I don't really watch Love Island, but these two do. But like, so you're more equipped to ask the yeah, Love Island questions. I suppose like, like most people was probably where the first scene. Yeah, like I think it's just interesting. I have a few questions I want to ask about like actually being in there because there's things that came out recently. But like, what was it like actually being in there for that long and being away from like all the sort of outside world and stuff? Like? The way I describe it is, you go in yourself. So you go in as you in your normal circumstances you have what you're like you've been raised that you've developed slowly into after school or whatever and then you have can can be a day it can be a week it can be three weeks and you come out the same version of you but like completely different circumstances yeah and that's that's where i think a lot of people struggle with the mental health aspect Mm -hmm. because it is seriously tough on your your mental health and in the sense that it's just so mind-boggling like it's like you know like justin bieber and all like comes out like they've they're like kind of messed in the head they were was or any sort of young teenager or young superstar whatever not that people i love them are fucking superstars obviously not (laughs) (laughs) but it's the sort of sudden fame and it's like i've had it a tiny taste compared to all those ones like but you do it's mental like it's so, so mental the yeah. the difference like and like what like so we sort of touched on it there but like is it like draining when you come out because i feel like you see all these ones come out and you're almost waiting to see oh like what brand data they're gonna get and like you know we see them like i can only imagine like the amount of dms that they were getting and stuff like we were sort of saying oh he messaged you when you came out but 
I suppose we can only imagine like how many people are like, oh yeah, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? Like, what is that? What it was like for you? Or I think the most draining thing was comparing yourself to other people. Right. And everybody can relate to that because everybody compares themselves to other people. But when you come out of Love Island, you are comparing yourself to all the other Love Islanders. You're comparing yourself. Oh, you're like. Oh, I'm such a loser. I didn't get that. I'm like, they're doing so well. What am I doing? I'm doing absolutely nothing. So I think that's the big thing. And like, everybody's following their own path and doing whatever their circumstances allow them to do. But I think that's the toughest bit is like trying to not compare yourself to other people. And it actually, I was more confident before Love Island than after it. Really? Yeah. Which wow. people find kind of odd because yeah. you're the same person but you've also you've gained like a bit of notoriety and like people know you so you think oh you must be like super cocky and blah 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 and you change but i actually got less confident because i was comparing myself to others i was analyzing everything i was doing and it took me a while I, I still don't think i'm back there a year on but i still i feel like i'm maturing and developing who i am yeah and it's 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 coming along and do you feel like there was like a pressure that came with that because like when you came out and say there's like certain love islanders getting these deals and doing being real busy was there a part of you that's like oh i need to be doing something like look look what they're doing yeah yeah well i think it is definitely the the comparing yourself to other ones and it's like guys are different in love and i i've said this I, ha- I don't think i've said this publicly but guys are very different than girls in love island so girls get massive yeah, you like pretty little thing. Pretty little that thing. thing. Sort of. All those big deals, they get crazy amounts. Yeah. Like if you're one of the the ones, the main characters on the show type thing. Guys is a li- it's a lot different. So in that sort of sense, you do well, but um, they're like like crazy because it's just the show. The demographic demographics of the show is all like girls. It's like ninety nine percent female that watch the show, so it's different. But yeah, I think it's it's really it's comparing yourself to others is the big yeah. thing, you know. I feel like with the girls, it's like you said, it's very it seems very much like like there was even ones we were saying that like agencies and all the most already agreed deals so before they even went into the show. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then like they're coming out and getting these deals in the ways. It seems more like they're doing like PAs and stuff like nightclub promotion and it's things like that. It seems like a totally different thing. Yeah, I think the girls there's actually stories and I won't say who, but there was girls behind the scenes that actually had their Instagrams, somebody like a professionals were on their Instagrams, they had their photos and all like photo shoots and all done before Seriously. Love Island so that they, uh, they could post every single day and just like really kneel their traction and really push off from there. Like so yeah it's different from i feel like most guys go on the show not really thinking of yeah, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you have anyone run the air cut whenever you were in my sister your sister all? yeah That's yeah it was lucky what? she is a marketing consultant what that was me what like <laughs> i suppose uh, whenever i've watched it a few times like for recording a podcast or whatever back to thomas's and watch like watch it and it's like it's, it's good it's a good watch like but i never like purposely go on to watch it but what, what makes you apply for it I didn't apply for it, um, right. so I I got back from San Diego. I was living there for two years, and like best place ever. All my friends out there love it, and uh, I had to come back because the the I couldn't renew my visa because uh, COVID closed the the embassy or whatever you call it. I can't remember. Um, so my visa expired. I had to come back. Came back. I think November or December. Uh, before love island and then i was just working i was like i'm gonna gonna work at like a job and try and go back to san diego in june time yeah so i just worked like a dog got in really good shape like put my head down um was working started like a marketing consultancy business with my sister because i did um basically i did uh laws and undergraduate and then i went and did a master's in business administration um after that so i like marketing I like strategy all that side of things so i was working on that on the side and um then itv wrote to me um just on my instagram account and i had yeah. like 
a thousand fifteen hundred followers like wow that's mm. small you know <laughs> so it was like this ver- verified itv casting studios uh, account and i was like geez they're like we think you're perfect for a show and i mean i've been approached like uh, three or four times from different shows like uh what do you call that one uh too hot to handle they yeah. they came yeah. at me with the uh, you know the way they do a, a fake cover story thing it's on netflix isn't it yeah, yeah it's the one on netflix but they, they say it's like uh some parties in paradise or something, or something. Yeah. yeah but um they came to me for that one and then love island usa and stuff but the um i was like flip that's them right now so i was like you know what i'll say yes and just go along with it and she was like can you have a phone call me i was like yeah she was like can you fill out this form i was like yeah she was like can you meet this person i was like yeah uh and then she was like uh, can you um meet the do a video call with the executive producers i was like okay yeah and then she was like can you fly over to london i was like yeah and then she was like can you fly <laughs> over to spain and i was like okay and, and did you like, know at oh, any sh- point what you were doing like no <laughs> <laughs> you were doing no, all i'm already joking oh <laughs> well, I, knew, I knew i knew what the crack was but i was just yeah. like i didn't care like i didn't, never had any ambitions to be yeah like I don't know, like semi semi known and stuff. I didn't yeah. re- don't really care about that stuff. I care about my passions are my passions, and then that stuff is like you know it's yeah. grand. Like I think I came across on the TV, like like I you were very chill, like yeah, because <laughs> I just didn't I didn't have any ambition to do it. I know everybody says you go on for love and stuff. Nobody goes on for love, but yeah. the idea is for me was I wanted to go on for adventure because that's what my sort of ethos in life is. I want to have the sickest life. I want to do so many adventures. I want to yeah 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 you know, you experience things that most people can't or yeah. haven't uh, or won't. And yeah, that was the reason of that. So you said there like a lot of people say oh i'm going in here for love and stuff but nobody actually was in for love is that something you really notice on the inside whenever you're in there like people you don't have to name any names like, but <laughs> would you know are people actually kind of like playing a game playing a game is like oh it's always like playing a game it's like one of those like terms that everybody uses like but it's just people being people like people go on you know you it's not very authentic going on and um meeting somebody in a day and then just sleeping in a bed with them and spending 24 hours with them like yeah. for the next two months yeah you know what i mean so you do grow you can get love from it like i yeah. mean like oh, there's yeah. love island couples and stuff that actually really do love each other and stuff but i i don't know if like it's maybe some people go in with the intention to open-mindedness mm. i'm not sure anybody goes in with the the intention to find love yeah i, I don't know if it comes from it, it comes do you, from it like do you yeah. think there is ones that did go in that you're like you sort of got the feeling like you, you're here because you want to be like famous basically or like you want to be like you want to go and get brown deals was there you're trying to get me in trouble i, mean. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just i don't but like, i want you to name names but i just mean like in terms of like you spend so much he's gonna be damn us <laughs> for the wrong reasons <laughs> you spend so much time with the people it's sort of like because i feel like you see it and everyone comes out and everyone's all like yeah i've made friends for life and all and like it's like is is that really the case like do you get already does everyone get on or is it sort of um well naturally People will get on, they won't get on. I 100% I'll say people do have friends for life in there, like, and it's something because you go through very stressful situations, yeah, and you bond. Like, the way I I said the same thing for me and Laura on Dancing with the Stars is that that's she's my girlfriend now, and it's when you go through really stressful situations like you grow very close yeah. and like when you're, when you're put under a lot of pressure then that's that's what happens so i think that happens um what was the question i've got ahead like i said i just mean <laughs> the main thing i was saying was like do you feel like there was ones who want any sort of had a plan like they're like i ain't coming out of here and i ain't gonna be yeah 100 percent. like yeah yeah i think that's obvious to people on yeah. the screen as well and people like yeah. you just spot that from a mile off I, I think it's pretty obvious like yeah like most guys i think are kind of different like maybe not really i don't know but like girls they know if they if they reach the the pinnacle of the show then they're gonna be like yeah crazy, crazy. does it get a bit like 
so you know when it's sort of guests people are sort of like oh i'm getting close to the end here do you is there like do people sort of change the way they behave running or is it sort of do you feel like there's pressure where like ones are proper like fucking if i get put out now like that's mm. it i think that was a big thing like this with Andrew yeah. and, pa- and was it pa- pa- no not page i feel like right. i notice it more like i've Tasha. noticed it more this year than ever it's sort of like you felt like it was like they were proper like getting real nasty if there's any chance yeah, of them going out really? does that make sense yeah, like, yeah. But do you, do you watch it now? Like. no no you don't no, no I, I watched it one season before i went on it was um greg's i watched greg's um when he won it well, so i watched right, that yeah. season um but no, I didn't watch this season at all. Yeah. And stuff. I think it's different though once you watch it as well. Like, like you know what been goes on. Yeah, 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 and it's yeah. just like, what I just want to get on. Would it be life. weird to watch it now, you know, and like how it all, the processes and all are? Like, is it just sort of like, you know what, what they're doing, if that makes sense? Then? I wouldn't, not really. To kind of like, yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's a re- at the end of the day, it's an entertainment show. It's a really good one. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. a reason for that. Like, and yeah. Yeah, everybody takes it as that, except the ones that go, flipping mental and like mm. dms and stuff and yeah think you're the worst person in the world yeah um but like most reasonable people know it's an entertainment show and yeah, yeah. Like i think whenever you're watching from the outside you sort of get this impression that it's like whatever amount of people in this house for eight weeks just on their own but is there a lot more contact with like the people behind the scenes whenever you're actually there for us it wasn't because um it was covid time and yeah. it was oh, we yeah. called the voice of god so right. like, yeah. it was like a speaker and the roof and i just uh, spoke to you through it that. was like matthew go out to the front door and collect your collect your uh, washing or something yeah is there someone who does all the washing for you like uh yeah there's uh there's like cleaners and stuff we we uh our season because it was covid and stuff it was so dirty the the place yeah. because yeah. they actually had to like they're obviously really strict about covid stuff so we had to go uh like out of the villa when they were clean it and stuff yeah, so we'd do challenges and whatnot and yeah all that. do you make your own bed um we had to change our bed a lot yeah I yeah I've heard that one wow and it's an effort because i hate changing beds yeah <laughs> I, the bed sheets i'll do i'll clean toilets i hate changing bed sheets yeah it's so mm-hmm. awkward yeah. yeah did you get any like free time or anything whenever you got out of the villa or was it just like when we got out sort of the um, places they like when you're no like whenever you know they like were saying there you had to leave the villa whenever they came in to change like or like clean and stuff like did you get to go anywhere or um, we sort of just stuck to going no the we, place? we had to stay in the villa because of those things but i know from previous seasons they went out to the beach and stuff in the local towns and stuff yeah um, but no we were we were stuck in there so we went out to the garden and like they got us McDonald's once, which is nice. nice. I, I hate McDonald's. <laughs> wow. It's terrible. Oh, that's a nice one. Um, so who cooks then? Do you have, have a chef, don't they? There's a catering, outside catering company, and then they bring in boxes and stuff and all that. So I didn't, mm. I hated the food. Yeah. I hated the food. Was it bread? It was more like prison item for yeah, you? Yeah, it was. was. <laughs> what, what sort of stuff did they give you? It was like really terrible. There was, you know, the most annoying thing, and uh, I respect anybody who's a vegetarian, but i don't know how you did um <laughs> they did vegetarian mondays no meat mondays and i was like this was the thing that really annoyed me because i lost four kilograms in there seriously i Fuck. i need my meat i need yeah. protein yeah. yeah i was trying to like i see when everybody was having their arguments at uh two o'clock in the morning or whatever <laughs> i was at the fridge getting chicken out of there to try and stock up my protein levels yeah. <laughs> just raw chicken out of the fridge <laughs> um what i was gonna say the not thing people always talk about is like the drinking like you don't really get any drink it's a it's two glass limit per uh, night is yeah it, that's wrong and yeah. like do you, does it get this stage because you haven't drank for so long you ever have the two glass and you're like fuck <laughs> i'm always Steam. like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no um i at the start so the first night i got beers so you choose yeah. earlier in the day what you want i got uh two two like beers and stuff and it was like a half pint and it was warm and like oh. steel oh, oh, so yeah. i was like that's the last time I'm, I'm doing that and then i went on to the, the white wine yeah and it wasn't actually too bad you know felt classy too yeah <laughs> nice <laughs> the last question i have about love island is sort of like this can season. you get me on it <laughs> <laughs> definitely not can you put a good word <laughs> um there's like a lot like this season there's two bites came out and they've sort of said a bit about like the like the input the producers have so mm. like 
but this year I know you didn't watch it but like there was like a load of drama around like Casa Amor so like oh, is, yeah. The, yeah. the girls the girls <laughs> left and there was like two boys in particular that were like really getting on really well with the girls but apparently like they were in their head on the first day they were proper like oh no like we're not we're not interested in any of those girls but like the producers then were sort of like if they come back with another boy like you could be going home and sort of like planting mm. the seed a bit so, so I found that interesting because like they got so much stick yeah, online what done, yeah. but like you don't hear what the producers are doing so like they've things. obviously sort of put a bit of fear in them yeah. and I was just like wondering like how much of it, the producers actually have much of a say they sort of like correlate like the, the like sort of scenes in a way if that makes sense um, maybe some but I think they stand off as much as they can yeah. obviously it's it's a TV show, so you need to have producers that kind of direct the the vision of the show, like yeah. you know. So, like some circumstances, they'll they'll like that. There, maybe they'll yeah. be like, um, you know, this could happen, and it's up to you. What's your reaction here? So, obviously, that's kind of entertaining for the viewers because yeah. it means that you know this guy's under pressure. He's in a pr- pressurized environment. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't you know do something here yeah. like he he'll get chucked out so it's kind of watching his reaction it's like psychology like that's all producers in reality tv do the, they're psych- psychologists basically yeah they put you like you think about it you're away from home like you know millions of people are watching you you're you've like met just a bunch of strangers you've no contact with outside world. no contact with outside world you don't know what time it is you don't know what date it is um and you don't know what's happening next and that's all a recipe for you to be as uncomfortable mm. as possible and that means that you're gonna like when you're uncomfortable you make mistakes yeah. so then you you'll have reactions you'll be emotional and yeah. that's what happens are you really like completely caught off from everything like mm-hmm. have you yeah have you any access to like news or anything or anything Nothing. i see that, that that's, that's, i that tried to get like. the the security guard to tell me about arsenal i was like <laughs> have arsenal signed anybody tell me so I'm, I'm very curious here um the thing that's the thing i find weird is that especially nowadays where you have access to like your phone and you can see twitter and you can see tiktok and kind of see what's the general consensus of all the, yeah i i don't watch it but at the same time i could go on twitter and i'll see about 20 different tweets about love island and in, in, in one scroll so you kind of know what everybody thinks of these people yeah and i think that's a re- i think that would be the main thing that would mess a lot of people up is because yeah. you're in there and you're like everything i do is being watched and i have no clue and it's almost like that I could imagine someone being really anxious to be like, get me out of here so I can see what people actually think of me. That's yeah. sad. That's a sad thought. But at the same time, I would say it's so true. A lot of people in there, they're like, I don't know what, you know, what people actually think. It's a good lesson, I think, in life because um, what they say to you when you go in is if you be honest with yourself, then whatever happens you can be proud of yourself and i think that was a great lesson and there's a reason they said that because they know from experience and what i found was that even just in general life is like people could have this opinion of you and a person could have this opinion of you but you're in here so like for example i always use this example um like say a girl out there could think i'm the best looking guy in the world guy yeah. she's ever seen the girl right next to her can think i'm the ugliest guy in the world neither are true and yeah. you have to kind of just be yourself i'm just me so i'm just being myself you know yeah. so like that's exactly what you have yeah. to think when you're in there and i think it's it's a good lesson you know yeah fair fair, fair. so you've learned a lot from it like. <laughs> yeah you do yeah through, through stressful times you do learn a lot like yeah. it's good life experiences and stuff and yeah it was, it was good crack man was there many years coming out thinking you were the best looking guy ever whenever you get out <laughs> no, no comment <laughs> <laughs> done well done well the, the thing the thing that I, I know obviously and we'll, we'll maybe chat about this is um, the whole dancing with the stars thing the thing that I want to ask is right so you've obviously have experience with Love Island and you have experience with dancing with stars and TV and stuff mm-hmm. so I've asked this before to people but if you could do on tv program what would it be dancing with stars again like yeah 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 because um would your girlfriend let you do it again yeah i'll do it with her <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll win it this time Can I? Yeah. Uh, I got to the semi-final so i wasn't paid left yeah. the person with yeah. two left feet like awesome. yeah. um i mean yeah i mean love island's just 
Love Island is great in the sense that it's you meet loads of people and stuff, but you just get very bored. Like it's like you're yeah. just sitting around a villa and you're like under a lot of pressure and stuff. Obviously, so your thing, but it's kind of like you're not really yeah. learning something or doing something. You're just like kind of waiting around. It's kind of like a high class prison. In a way. Yeah, <laughs> so it doesn't sound not nice. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that, but I suppose like da- taking like dancing with the stars, you've done, you've ticked that box. Yeah. You've ticked that box, right? Yeah. And uh, maybe that's an exclusive you maybe get and go back again. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dancing on ice this time. Yeah. Oh, uh, Jesus. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> if you see me on Dancing with the Stars, you'll know I'll not be going to dance yeah. on ice. <laughs> but um, like, w- is there anything where you'd think to yourself, if I got that call in the morning, 100%, like whenever I think SAS. about it, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, that'd be tough going. Like. I would love that. I would love that. Would um, you? Yeah, I love uh, that. See, that type of show is along my lines of like, this is a worthwhile show. Yeah. I love Dancing with the Stars because it pushed me. It was very uncomfortable, mm. and it pushed me, and I uh, learned a new skill, and uh, it was great. SAS is kind of like uh, your mind against your mind. Um, yeah. So it'll be really, really fun to do that. I was, um, uh, Laura was saying she did Hellwick, which is like SAS uh, down south. It's on RTE. Right. And uh, she's she's a monster, like. But uh, potentially that at some stage. Um, it's a very similar thing. But yeah, I would do any of those shows. I, li- I like those ones. Like, Bear yeah. Grylls. Bear Grylls, love it. Yeah. I was, I, we were watching an episode the other night. It was like, we're on with Terry Crews and all, and went up through Iceland. <laughs> and I was looking at us, and I was like, what a guy. If Bear Grylls sh- hit me up, I'd be like, drop everything. I'd be away. Yeah, that would be classic. Yeah. Like, I think there would be great, great experiences. You yeah. know? I think they're a lot tougher than the same, though. Mm, like uh, that yeah. SAS home, I would SAS? say. How um, does it look? It looks but so I'd say it's hard. Even, like, tough, even tougher if oh, you're there. Yeah, like, yeah, that, yeah, I, I yeah. wouldn't mind the physical aspect of it I, I genuinely think I could get fucked but you see the mental stuff where they're pure interrogating you and slamming oh, the yeah. desk and I'd be like I'd be crying did you see, <laughs> the, did you see the clip of the guy that time he like lied on his resume and said he was in the army and all yes and yeah fuck me man I oh was serious sc- I was scared of Arsenal yeah, yeah. I called him into the interrogation room and they were like pulled up a CV and all yeah. and they'd, they'd obviously were in the army so they're proper like you're a fucking disgrace and all and he's like like people have give their lives to the, oh, all, that the is, army and that's all that's pretty and bad scene like, about it yeah. and apparently he lasted like six weeks in the training and stuff and I was like there was a oh my there was a show them. that they used to do and it was a fella uh, I don't know it was I think it was, might have been on Netflix but it was a fella and he basically was he was like an ex-army guy but basically they stuck him in like these situations where he had to get from point a to point b and evade that country's like tracker force Jeez. so like he had to get from point a to point b like an yeah. extraction point and they were tracking him oh but it was so intense like but yeah ever watch that that show um oh, hunt it yes yeah. yeah, that, yeah. that yeah. would be sick like, i'd love to do that with laura yeah that'd be so cool i think there that would be class today there we go. yeah, yeah. yeah. Be did you see the one i watched on gogglebox the other night where um he proposed here oh. right at the very end before they jumped on the boat <laughs> no so, like, way. i mean like no one barely gets through this like yeah. no one barely gets and it, right towards the end they'd evade it like the hunters and stuff and right towards the very end they were running to the boat and i mean like the boat comes in scoot scoot waits 30 seconds and then pings off and he just like turned around and was like will you marry me and she was like yes 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 <laughs> i was like if that was me with, with my mom and i'd be like will you marry me and she'd be like i swear if you don't get like it was like they were like 20 grand <laughs> yeah i'll see you know what i mean that's and not bad was, you know yeah. and watch, and going mad, like what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but they had to jump into water and swim over to the boat Oh, yeah, right. literally it yeah. stops for 30 seconds yeah. and you have to like jump in and get on the boat and yeah. not time or to go that's mad it. But, um, that's so cool explain then the whole, the whole dancing with the stars thing because obviously through that you met your now girlfriend mm-hmm. um, that seems like does that happen a bit where it's a lot in them shows because I know was it Strictly Come Dancing where Joe's oh, I know, Joe's yeah. Sugar Strictly whatever. Curse yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it does the Dancing with the Stars it's yeah. not really I wouldn't call it a curse like but yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it was good for me yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm the curse there I yeah. don't know um, no it does happen and then the reason I think is because it's like you're spending so much time with yeah. that person one on one and it's like you're doing kind of sexy dances like it's like yeah. you're doing <laughs> you're, close contact yeah and close stuff. contact yeah. and stuff and it's hard like if you're human but i think um uh it was more like you as i said earlier it's kind of you grow closer 
through yeah. pressurized situations stressful situations so that's where you really connect and then yeah. you're like i think i was the big thing so i think it's i said this to the press before it was um it's a more natural way to meet somebody yeah than love and i yeah. think it's not as much as a pressured environment to get in a relationship yeah like yeah it's more exactly. relaxed, like, like it's kind of like with with love and you're like you it's weird taking that aspect of your life something so personal mm-hmm. and like kind of turn it into a game yeah uh whereas dancing with stars is like you're focusing on winning this this tournament like you really want to be the best dancer you can and that kind of happens as a byproduct of you spend so much time together and yeah. you're just having a great time and, you know and how often do you train for that is it like proper a whole week all, thing all it's all, all day every time. day for like all, 10 hours 100 percent. like yeah. i literally killed myself for um for from basically november i came back from uh america and i think uh i think around december and then i went straight to the dance room for until the end of march every single day Seriously? i had what was that like thir- 14 weeks without a without a day off and that was all day like pretty much yeah Fuck that. <laughs> and it was, was 14 weeks with your with, now girlfriend yes so what if it's not a personal question how did you like did you know <laughs> after a few weeks or was it like after a week or week two week one I'm a smooth criminal yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she did, you just been walked into the room and she was like yeah. 100% that's okay for me you know? the one just cha cha yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was the hardest dance oh cha cha yeah cha cha I was embarrassing yeah. I, I made a dick out of myself on yeah. uh, national TV yeah. so yeah but like I don't care uh like yeah don't care <laughs> <laughs> no money joking i so the i the story kind of was over first to do it over a broad thing it was i got to the semi-final at the start i was like really crap and i was like the complete underdog like last on the scoreboard every single week and then there was kind of like week six where i just basically the story was it's a it's dedication week right and it's where you dedicate a dance to somebody in your life past or present and so i dedicated a dance to my friend uh ryan freeman who passed away when i was in quarantine for love island yeah um it was a real tragic accident he's only 27 or 28 sorry and um so like that was a week before i that was when i was in quarantine for love island like i think it was a week before i went into the villa so i had a rough time and then um i did a dedication week to him so it was like really emotional for me and it just was i'm not i'm not gonna i'm gonna be cocky and say it was spectacular because it was Mm -hmm. like i'm i'm not telling a lie when i say that it was really emotional it was like really beautiful tribute and everybody just i had people in the airport going to america there saying I remember that uh, week six, week six, six, see you again, and it was so beautiful. Like, yeah. like everybody says that one. So it was awesome. emotional. It was like Laura said it. It's really rare when you, when as a dancer, where you just forget everything and you just dance, like yeah. because you're always considering, oh, what's my next move? Blah blah blah. She said, I felt that on the dance floor. I felt like I was just like I was in a trance nearly i was so so beautiful like i can't describe it like yeah so it was amazing that whole week i was really emotional and stuff um, and i was kind of like a grievance process for me so it was really good um and then i won that week it was the best dance of the night and um i got a bye week so the week after it was like you got three so i I was kind of chilling and (laughs) i when i say chilling i was really chilling like i uh well, I was saying that I was still going to the studio every day, but Laura got sick during it as well, like really sick. So I was like doing my steps and all and, and sh- shit. Um, am I allowed to curse here? Yeah. 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 And shit. So I was like, I was absolutely brutal at this cha cha. Yeah. And she was like, oh, I can't be arsed. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, because she's got the, the patience of a saint, like with me, because uh, it took me. 45 minutes to learn how to like what's that one it was like uh it's kind of like a dab nearly it's like what's that i 
can't remember what it was, but it's literally like moving your hands in a certain way. And it took me 45 minutes to learn how to do that. So that kind of describes my yeah. ability as a dancer. <laughs> um, so the yeah. Macarena? I think it was something like that. It wasn't. It was like, it was it definitely it was wasn't like, the Macarena. The Macarena. Oh, it was a pushity push. Uh, this here thing. It no took well. me 45 minutes to link my feet with my hands. I couldn't coordinate it. Nice. I'm six foot six, so obviously that's, that comes with the territory a little bit. Yeah. But um, yeah, I couldn't do it, so she got really pissed off me. Um, overall, that's another side story. I'm getting completely sidetracked here, lads. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that was uh, so that week I did the cha cha and I forgot my steps during the middle of this uh, thing, and I basically it was like, oh fuck, and uh, it was kind of caught in the TV. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really watched it back since, but I was like, the camera was right in front of me and this this is all live. Yeah. And I completely forgot what I was doing. I had like a brain fart because I didn't practice enough like. And um, I, all I, I just couldn't help it. And I was like, oh fuck. And you just see my mouth like, <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I got uh, threes out of tens for that one. Uh, I think, yeah, I think mm-hmm. I got a two in one of them as well, uh. so. Yeah, but then I uh, jokes on them. I got really good after that. And yeah, got to semi final. Nice. So nice. So that was a really long winded way to describe my journey there, but yeah, no. <laughs> that's, there good. that's good. That's sick though. And then now you are, you you do full time like personal training and, and like mindset coaching and stuff like that. Yes. Well, I don't like. Um, I kind of I don't have a great way to describe what I do in the sense I. I do obviously the the coaching the physical training so I give people like the personalized workout programs workout yeah. uh, meal plans and stuff like that but I also like doing the mindset bit with that so what I've got is like uh, I've got a one to one service which is called complete lifestyle reset and the idea behind it is that I'll get you in the ship and I'll build the mental the mindset habits with that so you can stay in shape and live a more energetic fulfilled you know life and just be happier because I kind of get a little bit bored with just like eat more protein and um, progressive overload you know that sort of stuff and I, I think my mindset is is about self-improvement overall and I, I really enjoy yeah. the um, doing I think the mindset is the most important thing that I can con- contribute to somebody and um, so if I can help them with that because typically anybody who's not in shape um, and, and wants to be in shape it, it's a mindset thing mm-hmm. like it's really easy to be in a calorie deficit and you know eat more protein and go to the weight go to the gym but it's the mindset behind that is the tough bit it's like um you're good enough it's like trying to trying to prove to yourself that you're good enough to deserve to have that good body that great shape to it's uh, to prove to yourself that you can do it you know because a lot of people just put themselves down a lot and it's kind of like just building them up and trying to trying to help them that way so that's kind of what i do one-to-one and then i've got the the lower ticket sort of version which is called reset which is like a a lower skill version of that yeah so, yeah i love it in terms of like mindset what would you say is like the main things people really struggle with when they're trying to like change i think the big thing is to prove to themselves that they are worth it and they can do it because a lot of people really put themselves down and talk negatively to themselves every single day and i i notice this with myself because I, i'm i'm um what sort pessimist i'm i'm an optimist but i'm i i talk negative i'm very harsh on myself yeah so i think yeah. a lot of people that i've i've learned with coaching people is that they are the same and it gets in their way of like actually improving and becoming the best version of themselves so like the trick i always tell people is in a day just be mindful and just count how many times your mind wanders and you think negatively about yourself like and you realize if if you're feeling negative overall just do that and see how many times it is i guarantee it's over 10 times in like an hour you'll talk negatively to yourself and you're like <laughs> how how you that's why you're feeling so bad so like try and be mindful and cut that out and like actually ask yourself is this like reasonable is why why sh- why am i saying this to me? is there any evidence behind you saying these things and you realize like 90 percent of the time it's there's no evidence behind it you're just saying it because it's kind of an assumption that's been built into your brain from society and n- just 
people around you and just your overall lifestyle for the past while and so that's kind of the the lifestyle change it's like building those positive habits and removing the negative ones yeah you do a lot of traveling as well I do. I enjoy the island, and, the island uh, plane. What was the question? What was the? I think a good place to thought would end. It would just be like, where's the best places you've been? Like, where would you recommend people to go? Like, oh, the best places. So to live San Diego was the best place ever. I love yeah. that place, and like all my friends. Well, ninety percent of my friends are from San Diego because I just get on so well, and I've only known them like two or three years, and that's they're just. The best people ever are in Southern California, in my opinion, San Diego, and I. So, and Ireland, obviously. Uh, but, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> uh, but I think there, um, Zermatt is unbelievable. It's up in Switzerland for skiing. I don't know right. if any, you know, the Toblerone mountain? Yeah. Yes. That's Zermatt. And it's, nice. you oh, have really? to get a train up to it. And there's no cars up there, it's all like uh, go karts and oh, like so electric awesome. go-karts what's once you and skate down to the bottom you have to get the train back up again yeah <laughs> no there's like a, a cabin <laughs> you know the gondola all that stuff but it's insane for for skiing and stuff it's yeah. beautiful um i think beach wise like bahamas is pretty sick like it's really good yeah it's class yeah um depends what holidays you want like i think skiing wise are mat or the alps somewhere yeah. brilliant like um for for a longer stay san diego is amazing if you want to live over there um and then beach holidays probably caribbean somewhere but yeah what sort of things is in in san diego san diego Just there's uh surfing there's um do you do surfing no no <laughs> i was i was afraid of the sharks <laughs> is it sharks? there's no sharks out there oh, but gosh. well there is actually there's a great white breeding ground out the other off an island off uh san diego oh, lovely but there's been like no shark attacks like pretty much ever in san diego but uh to do it's pretty much like there's parties everywhere so you can there's oh there's this unbelievable uh venue for music festivals there now so yeah. it's literally just built and it's uh san diego is a city by the beach obviously so there's like a bay around the downtown mm -hmm. and it's like kind of an island music festival where they so just sick. built this island and nice. just for this music and it's like a dome ship thing this place is insane yeah. i think um swedish house mafia just played a their, the opening thing for it and it's insane like a class so to party all that stuff san diego is the best place ever and you're close to la as well it's only a two-hour um drive and then um vegas so when i was living over there my boss i was working as like a <clears throat> kind of like a second man for this startup um uh and the bot my boss was like a an inventor is worth like 30 million Fuck. And <laughs> i was just working as working on this startup and it was basically a phone where if i was talking in the room here you just wouldn't be able to hear what i was saying uh, it's for like military purposes and stuff what? Nice. so i was like doing all like the accounting and like um like strategy and different things behind that and marketing and stuff and just basically being his bitch as well yeah. <laughs> so, but he was a good guy as well so we just had the crack and we were doing good uh work as well and so there was one week where i was just working really well for him did loads of stuff for him and he was like i he knew i was big into the ufc and stuff so i yeah. he was like mcgregor was fighting um cowboy at that time yeah in yeah. vegas and he was like on friday morning um he was like here here's a bonus uh, you get me no give me money for the flights in the hotel and stuff oh, to sick. to vegas Mad. so i literally booked a flight that morning got off work early and flew to vegas 20 minutes in the air and i was in vegas yeah. and uh just like that was a great weekend it's awesome. it's awesome. yeah That's i awesome. near died yeah <laughs> yeah i was actually heading to vegas in two weeks but unfortunately i'm not going to a conor mcgregor fight like. oh yeah, yeah. yeah. any, what, any what recommendations when i'm out there um, to do. this well, is the part where he goes well actually as a five dollar off your cheeseburger yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's more like yeah. <laughs> um i think when the is the ufc on is there any mm. events on it's no. on I don't think there's much on. I think we're going on like a Monday. Oh, so right. Like yeah. We're, not, we're missing like the weekend shows okay. and stuff. Yeah. Like I was says, pool party, nightclub, pool party, nightclub, pool party, nightclub, three days, you're golden. Yeah. 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 It's great. Um, 
I think uh, Hakkasan's really good. Um, what was the other one? Uh, What's Hakkasan? Hakkasan's like a nightclub there. We're in one of the hotels, is it? Or uh, is it just not yes, it's on? MGM, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just go out and go to pool parties. I think there's loads there. I haven't really experienced Vegas in that way. I've Both times I've been to Vegas, uh, one when I was 19, I had a, like a, a, a ID that looked pretty much exactly yeah. like me it was like 24 oh, at the time. There, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it was like 24 at the time so it was a real idea and he looked really similar to me and i got in ever and i swear to god on that plane back i thought i was down that's <laughs> how, how <laughs> I, my heart was going 90 uh so that time and then the second time i went cowboy Cerrone, the mcgregor fight and i got alcohol poison at the last thing because i just I basically, I'll tell you a story. So I don't condone this as well because I don't really drink <laughs> alcohol either. Like, um, But obviously I was having a good weekend. McGregor just beat Cowboy Cerrone in like 60 seconds and stuff. Yeah. And the place was electric. Like, so we were just, yeah. it was like a load of arse. And like, you're having a great crack. Yeah. And I went back to the hotel room um, and I met up with a load of Irish guys out there so it worked out well and uh, we just had like whiskey and stuff so I ended up taking like three quarters of a uh, 10 glass of uh, Jameson before I went out and I swear to God I, I didn't realize as well because it was just like we were just being Hallians and then uh, we went to where was his after party it was McGregor's after party in one of the big nightclubs I can't remember the name there's a general admission side so you pay like $60 to get in that side and I was like going there I was like oh my god I'm so wiped out at this this was before the night even started and uh, I went to the general admission side and McGregor was up on the side and I was like fuck I have to get into VIP <laughs> I have to get into VIP <laughs> I was like I was like, that was a broke, like, uh, like I was literally just graduate broke and stuff. And uh, so I was like, how am I going to get in here? I think it's like, it's like 10 grand to get in, like oh, for a table oh, and stuff. Like, oh so my, I think oh it's more for a table God. actually, but you have to have a table and it's like at least like 10, 20, 30 grand, like for a table. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're in Vegas, like yeah, that was McGregor's random. after party, like, so yeah, it was like big like. money, like, and uh, I was like, God, I don't, don't, can't do that, obviously. So I went and I was just like, fuck it. So I went out and um, you had to go out to go in essentially. So I went yeah. out of the general mission side and just went off at no adventure. And there's this guy and he was walking towards the VIP side. So I was like, are you going in the VIP? He was like, yeah. And I was like, what's the chance of me getting in with you? He was like, and he was like, not very likely. I was like, but God loves a trier. And he just start, started laughing, started smiling and stuff. And we are just joking. And then I saw the bouncer kind of looking at us in the, the distance. So I put my arm around him and started acting like we were best friends. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I get really smart when I'm drunk. Like, yeah. I'm like, in real life, I'm not. <laughs> and uh, so we basically walked up and approached and the guy showed his ticket and stuff. And... Uh, the bouncer just grabbed my forearm and just stamped it. I was like, no Damn. fucking way. No <laughs> way. This was me. Sick. I absolutely wiped off my face uh, like three quarters of Jameson tan glass down me with a tricolor wrapped around me. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I know, huh? tacky guy. Uh, and I uh, basically got, there was like four rounds of security to get in there and uh, the, got around all four, four of them walked in by myself and i just was like what the hell am i gonna do yeah here? and so a weird story was um you know that brand hera yeah yeah, yeah. so your guy ash white who started that i recognized him from instagram yeah and this is me like i like 1500 followers it wasn't like mm. a, a name or anything um and uh, i was just like yo ash you're a legend uh, i love your brand yeah he goes like Come on in with us. He had a table right beside McGregor in there with like a, a load of guys. I think Joss Mooney and all those ones. So I uh, I jumped in with him and they're like get, feeding me shots of Grey Goose no, and yeah. everything. And I was just like, uh, then when you start going and you're that wiped out. And so there's a <laughs> really funny story is uh, there's a video I took off McGregor. So McGregor was literally there and yeah. I was here all night yeah and Bissett was playing you know you're like guy Bissett and stuff it was good <laughs> but um, 
I was like, uh, what the fuck was that? There was a video. I took a video and McGregor was dancing and stuff. Yeah. And it was like, uh, you hear me in the background saying, oh, no, like really drunk, like slurred words and stuff. Let's you do know what I'm saying. Let's go to that. He's like dancing away like this here. And uh, he, so I put up my, my story or whatever and he posted it. He got the, no, I put it on TikTok. This was ages ago. And it got like uh, like a hundred thousand views or something, and I was like, "Holy shit, let's take off!" So uh, I put it up, and then uh, McGregor actually screen recorded or something and put it up on his Instagram uh, post. This is like three or four years ago. Sick. I was like fucking mad, and all you did hear you, did in you that voice is all you hear in that video is like, "Let's go!" <laughs> <laughs> did you actually like, talk to him? Uh, yeah, got nice. a photo on all of them. Yeah, nah, yeah, that's yeah, it was really cool. Like he was I really, really, really nice. I really want to find this video. Yeah, it's, going it's, on. it's there somewhere. Like I'll, sh- I'll get it first. I'll get it for you. I don't, I don't think we could end on the podcast yeah, awesome. uh, the any better way. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was sick. Well, uh, you must be the luckiest man on that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe <laughs> that was sick. It's not luck. It's not luck. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I call that skill. Yeah. <laughs> a ten glass of Jameson and he turns in the IQ level of thousand. Um, anyway, I got. Poison. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it all. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we'll end that there. Um, yeah. And uh, good luck for everything. If you want to obviously get mindset, no, I was going to say mindset coach. What, what, what is it? The whole. I. It's complete lifestyle reset is the one to one, and then the the more um, like more autonomous one, which you take care of yourself, and it's all personalized and stuff as well. But it's uh, reset, so it's all on my Instagram, the bio, and all. Yeah, and it's kind of. Go drop uh, a follow yeah. and uh, anything like that, you can get in touch. But no, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks awesome. for having me. Pleasure. Cheers. Cheers. Eventually. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> You're a win for all of us. <laughs>